Hello, you are watching Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner, and my next guest is Jeanette Arsenault, who's a singer-songwriter uh, whose music touches on social issues. She sang for our Canadian Olympic athletes both in Salt Lake City in 2002, in Athens in 2004, and also the Olympic torch relay celebration in 2009, and more recently she was invited to sing at the Business and Professional Women International World Congress in Helsinki, uh, Finland in June. Uh, she's based in Prince Edward County and of course uh, later in the segment before we take a break I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Jeanette's. Hello Jeanette Arsenault. Hi, nice to see you Shannon. Oh, it's nice to see you. Um, and you look lovely in these colors. Oh, thank you. It's always that thing, what color am I going to wear for TV? What color looks good, you know? Now, what, uh -huh. now, you're a singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. you're a recording artist, uh, you're a performing artist. Um, what inspired you to follow this path in the arts? I think it chose me right. rather than me choosing it. Um, from a very young age, I came from a very musical family. There were 14 children in my mother's family. Wow. 13 children in my dad's. When we had a family reunion, we had to rent a hall, literally. Oh, wow. But they all yeah. played instruments. I remember um, as growing up as a child, all the adults would sit in a circle, and then they would encourage the children to go to the center, and you either had to dance or play the spoons, which is a very Acadian thing to do, or sing. And I couldn't play spoons, I couldn't play fiddle, I couldn't step dance, so I sang. So it came right, f it's, it's, it's something that came right from, from the ground roots for me. It, it was, it's um, in my blood, as they say. But I took another path uh, in the meantime, and my calling was music. I knew that in the end. And, you know, earlier, um, before you started to sing, you were working on Parliament Hill. I mean, you, you've had some really interesting jobs. That was the other path that I went. I went through school, and, um, you know, what did I aspire to be? I wanted to be go into music, but I also needed to make a living. I mean, there is reality. And so I studied the, a secretarial path, and I went to Ottawa worked for two cabinet ministers, worked for senators and MPs, and I had a day job on Parliament Hill in Ottawa for 10 years. And I used to look out the window and see all the performances live on Parliament Hill, wow. and dreaming, looking out the window like that. Oh, I wish, you know, I wish I was out there. And it happened in 2001, when I quit my day job, I went back and was invited to sing CBC Live TV for yeah. Canada Day. So that was a whole other epiphany moment for me. But this really inspired you, uh, that moment, and looking out the window, and really sort of got you on your path. Looking out the window and thinking, <laughs> when I am on my deathbed, looking ahead, when I'm on my deathbed and I look back, am I going to say, I wish I could have? I want to live my life, I, I want to try it, as opposed to, I wish I had of, or I wish I could have. So that's what really I decided, okay, quit my day job. I had an excellent paying job and I was working in the upper echelons of, of Parliament Hill and traveling in the finest um, accommodations and, and jet flights and all those sort of things. Quit my day job, lived on, I think it was $200 a month with my first singing job, and spent all my pension money but saying, I am following my dream. I am not going to give up. And that's how it all started. Now, how would you, you yourself, best describe your music? That's one thing that I haven't come up with a category specifically for myself. I mean, I can tell you what I'm not. I'm not jazz, I'm not blues, I'm not funk, I'm not pop, I'm not, you know, I can go on and on. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I like to write motivational and inspirational music and songs that have a message. I like to write anthems, I like to write theme songs, I like to write about issues that affect women, social issues. Right, yeah. That's that's where I think my strength lies as a singer-songwriter. And in, in, these, uh, in these issues, I mean, where, where are you getting your inspiration? Is it uh, women that you know? Is it what you're, you're reading in the news? Is it uh, something that has touched you personally? I mean, what is really underlying what drives you? Um, Usually it's the vulnerable, society's vulnerable, or people that don't have a voice. For right. instance, I wrote a song um, called uh, Angel in Disguise after hearing Stephen Lewis speak on uh, the Vicki Gabbaro show about women dying of AIDS around the world, not just in Africa. So I took the word AIDS, A-I-D-S, angel in disguise. Maybe God is watching us through her eyes. And that was the, the gist of how I got that song. So it's usually issues that, that 
touch my heart and touch my soul, which is where I feel I'm called to be a voice for. And that was one of them. Now, your most recent um, uh, CD um, album is I Wish I Had Wings. Tell us a little bit about your album. I wish I, I never know whether I should be calling it an album or a CD these right. days. You know, I, you know, it's it's both. Yeah, it is. They still call them albums. Yeah. They still, even though they, they are put out on CDs, and now with digital downloads, yeah, I mean, you can have a digital download album, and not have a CD anymore. Um, I wish I had wings. Is inspirational, motivational again, and it has a lot of causes on it this time because that is that my passion is to raise raise awareness and raise funds. I've done a lot of uh, fundraising in Prince Edward County where I live all right, and helped coordinate and helped organize for, my first one was for the tsunami victims in 2005. Right. So in January, if you can imagine this, in a small rural com community, we, we raised in three hours like $8,000 which was doubled to $16,000 with a handful of people. I mean it's just such a generous community. We had 40 musicians, you know. So we did that one really inspired me to, to, to see how important music can play in raising awareness and funds. So since then, I, I coordinated um, World AIDS Day in 2006 to help with the, the grandmothers in Africa who are raising the orphans now. And the, the numbers are going to rise to something like 20 million orphans you know, by 2020, I think, is, right. is the number. So again, the power of music. Um, in, in uh, when the Japan tsunami happened, I wasn't organizing it, but again, musicians came together and, and raised awareness and raised funds. So I think there is a, a really uh, important role for musicians to play. On a personal note, uh, when Haiti, the earthquake happened in Haiti in 2010, that that touched me to my very soul. I wrote a song about it. I've been helping raising funds for right, it. Yeah. We have um, an organization we call the 500 Club, where we're looking for 500 people to pay a dollar a week each, so $52 a year will, f will feed 36 children for a whole year, you know? So there are ways that we can um, get the word out. There's different ways through the media. One of them is through music, and I think that's where I belong in raising that, that awareness. Now, is there a one person who's really impacted you the most in your life, who's really, really touched you uh, and is is the spark that that uh, is a, is a muse that's, for you? That's a that's a very good question, Shannon. And and you know I've I've often wondered about the, the various people in my life who have uh, influenced me or touched me. But I have to say the one who has inspired me the most would be my aunt, Angèle Arsenault. She's a uh, an Acadian singer songwriter. She's an award winning um, artist. Released. I can't even keep track of how many albums she has out now. But when she gets on stage and when she sings, the person that you see on stage is the person that she is. She's an authentic, real person. And she comes, reaches into her soul and, and speaks out and sings out to, to, her, to the people who love her and who love to watch her sing. But I love her philosophy. I love her songwriting uh, skills. And I love her love for people. She loves what she does, and she loves the people that she sings for and works for. So I, I like that kind of um, model for what I do. And your brother is also someone who touches you as well, your heart. Yeah, I was saying that for Angèle, for musically, but personally, yes. I have a, a wonderful mm -hmm. brother uh, named Ronald who lives in Hamilton. He has cerebral palsy, yeah. and so we've, you know, I've been raised uh, in awareness of the vulnerable from the time that I was very young. He recently was in hospital for a second time with a bout of respiratory uh, illness and he was in ICU. Someone said to me, and I just think it's so right, all he has to do is sit and smile and the whole world comes running. That's about all my brother can do. He's a total care cerebral palsy um, uh, person and he literally has this smile that beams from the deep down in his soul and you just feel his presence when you're around him. That's very inspiring. And we learn a lot from people um, who have these kinds of illnesses. I think we learn more than we teach them, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah I do. Now let's talk about um, the, uh, the, the, the Business Professional Women International mm -hmm. World Congress in Helsinki. 
Um, you had a chance, and you were telling me, of course, before earlier before the show, um, how you got to be there. It's funny how life works out, you know. Yeah. Um, I think you know also, I went to, to two Olympic Games as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, so totally. I live in Picton, Ontario, just sitting in the suburbs of Picton. And um, I tell the students now, after I went to those two Olympic Games, just dream big right where you are. You don't have to go and move to a big city in order to follow your passion and follow your dream. It just so happens, in my case, my next door neighbor is, is, was the president of the Canada chapter of Business and International Women. In 2006, she said, you should write an anthem for women. We need a rallying call. Sure, okay. So she said, she came into my living room. We were writing out some ideas. And I said, you know, the roots are pretty deep in a lot of those countries to try and, and, and emancipate women. How do you do that? You know, I said, the roots are really deep. But I said, but you still got to shake that tree. Boom. That was the line. It just came to me, and the whole song revolved around the roots may be deep, but you still got to shake that tree. Anyway, skip ahead to recorded the song, uh, premiered it at the, um, um, in the, the Sky Dome at the Conference for Business and International Women Canada. Skip ahead to when it was time for her to um, the end of her term. She was in Winnipeg. There was a woman there. This is a long convoluted story, but it's all related. There was a woman there who was vying to be the international president. She heard the song. When she won the presidency, played the song around the world, everywhere she went for three years around the world. And how did I know that she actually did that? Because by the time I got to Helsinki in June, when I opened up with the first, hey, 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 there, woman, 600 women from 60 countries around the world stood up and started to sing along with me. What a thrill. What a thrill. Well, we're going to have a chance to um, hear a little bit of that song okay. and see you in action during the break. And we are going to take a quick break now, which means it's a good to know minute. And Jeanette, I know you've got a fantastic tip. Go ahead. I have this theory that I came up with called the puzzle theory. Okay, what if the world and life is one great big puzzle? And my piece of the puzzle is my mission or what I'm supposed to do on this earth. So I have to find out what my mission is. And then I have to find out where it fits in the world, upside down, sideways, whichever way it goes, in order to help complete the puzzle. But not only is it important for me to do something with my puzzle so that I've done accomplished something, but what about the people behind me, the next generation? They can't do their part until I've done my part, just like all the women ahead of us, all the pioneering, fantastic, extraordinary women who were there before us have laid their pieces of their puzzle so that we could come along and add to it. That's, that's how I see the world. Well, thank you so much. We'll take a quick break and uh, you'll have a chance to see Jeanette's uh, YouTube video uh, during this break and when we come back, more about uh, social causes and music and making a difference. Stay right there. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner. Welcome back to the show. And uh, I'm speaking with my guest, Jeanette Arsenault, who is a singer, songwriter, recording artist, performing artist. Uh, what a powerful voice you have. What a great video that was. Thank you. That, that was, uh, it's actually fun to see afterwards, because when you're doing yeah. a show, it's a whole different um, experience than to sit back and watch it and then to see the whole room being panned and watching all the women in their various... Well, they all got up and were rocking they were, and that's and great. And it was like that the whole week that I was there for six days I sang. Oh my gosh, it was, it was an amazing experience. I keep saying I was a rock star in Helsinki. <laughs> now, one of the things that I really think is uh, interesting about you is um, you actually have produced your albums mm -hmm. independently. Six of them? Six of them. Wow. Yeah. Six. At the early outset of my, of my career, um, I had the option of either trying to find a record deal, which is what the norm was, or um, producing independently. Uh, finding a record deal would mean giving up a lot of, of my copyrights and a lot of my, um, my rights to the songs. And the overriding factor was that my daughter was born the year my first album was released. So I had to make that decision whether I was going to um, promote the album around the world or wherever and leave her behind or drag her with me on the road. And I decided that none of those, neither one of those options uh, was suitable for me. So I decided I was going to raise my daughter. And I released the album thought, well, wherever it lands, 
you know, that's fine. It'll be good. It'll, it'll be fine, and I'll be happy with, with any little bit that I get to do. And maybe while we can uh, just show some of your album covers while mm -hmm. we're chatting. Yep. Uh, so the first one was in 1994 from The Heart, and I don't have any more of that one. So, um, that one was sold out. It was followed by I Believe in You. That one was sold out. And the third one was uh, a Don't rise. you love it when they get sold out? It's sold out. It sounds so good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. But I also see the evolution. You know, I don't know if I would re-release from yeah. the heart because there's an evolution up to up to uh, I wish I had wings. So it was followed that after that was a rise was my my Christian album. Oh, I see that women of the world. Yeah, here we go. Women of the world is the one that was uh, a great designed album by cover. a local by a local uh, Trenton artist, graphic artist. I love that cover. So that's the one that took me to Helsinki, and the song is now available in, in French, Italian, Spanish, and English because that's their four official languages. Um, then I released uh, This Is My Canada, uh, which is the song that took me to the two Olympic Games and yep. the Olympic Torch Relay celebrations in Picton. So it's, it's been a wild, wonderful, amazing ride. I've been able to release my albums, be self-sufficient, self-financed, self-produced, um, book my own shows. I ended up in Athens. I ended up in Salt Lake City. I ended up in Helsinki, and have some wonderful opportunities while at the same time uh, being able to raise my daughter, which was number one priority for me. So, what are the drawbacks to having produced your own album rather than, you know, you know, giving that? Um, obviously, you're giving away some creative control, and obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, money to mm -hmm. producers to do it for you. But uh, there must be a drawback then of, of doing it yourself. I would say the challenge when you're releasing right. your own is the not having the marketing and promotional support that you would have had with a big record company. But you know what? I wouldn't have wanted that anyway because that would have taken me away from raising my daughter. You see what I mean? Yeah. So sure. I think it unfolded the way it's supposed to. She's now 16 going into grade 12. So, and more independent, and I now have more opportunities to, to shop my songs and perhaps take them further afield than I've been able to do in the last you know, several years. I don't regret anything. I think we all travel on a path and on a journey for a purpose to develop whatever it is we're supposed to develop in life, and I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Jeanette, where would uh, people find your albums? They can go to uh, uh, JeanetteArsenault.ca. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also available on CDBaby.com. I can't say enough about CD Baby. They've been, right from the very beginning, they've been extraordinarily helpful and, and promotion-wise and marketing-wise and, and financial um, openness to, to artists and everything. So I would really, really recommend any independent artist go to CD Baby. It's also available on iTunes, Amazon, all your regular outlets on, online. Was there ever um, a time that you didn't believe in yourself? I think we all go through that, mm. um, especially as an artist where you're the, and I don't want to say your value and your worth, but your ap apparent value and worth depends on how many CD sales you have or, or how many uh, appearances you do or, or that sort of thing. So then, you know, you question, well, am I really in the right field? Um, because maybe it didn't go to as many places as, as I would have liked. But I would always weigh that against the fact that my family, you know, my daughter, raising my daughter was number one, so I don't have any regrets. Yes, I did have moments, but I still felt I was right where I was supposed to be. I think that's an important part of whatever you decide to do in your life, no matter what profession you're following. If, if it's where your passion is and where your heart is, if you feel that you're doing what you're called to be doing, then it's no longer about um, accolades and the money and, and any of those sort of things. If you're in the music business for that, you're going to get eaten alive. So is I'm, it a feeling? It's a, it's, you can say it's a feeling. I also say that um, it's something I can't help but do. Mm -hmm. I'm not complete without doing my music. I, it's, it's where I find myself, I guess, and what I need to share with the world. So I couldn't see myself doing anything else. What's next for you? Well, uh, I have three other albums. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> three other albums in my head right. uh, to come out. You're busy, so it, you know. Um, and now, as I say, now that my daughter's going into grade 12, and I have a little bit more freedom to to be able to to travel further afield, I will probably be traveling more and, and doing shows further afield than I have been on a more regular basis. Uh, where um, where can uh, people see you perform? 
in the next while? In the next while. Uh, there are I'm going to be in Peterborough, actually, for um, a okay. show that I'm, I'm involved with called Folk Tales Revisited. And Edith Folk was a, um, an anthologist of folk music in Canada, so I've been asked to participate in that. Um, just been asked to perform in Cornwall. I'm still doing a lot of, a lot of Eastern Ontario stuff. I'm booked for July 2012 here at the Royal York Hotel in Toronto. So Got it. I, I do have a, a few shows booked ahead. How would you um, define success? I mean, it's, it's, you, you, you had a career, you did very well for yourself working in, on Parliament Hill, you're traveling quite a bit, you're working with high profile individuals, mm -hmm. um, making a salary. I danced with Pierre Trudeau. It, oh, you danced with Pierre Trudeau, wow. <laughs> there are a lot of good stories Love there. Love that. There are a lot of good stories. That's a very good question though. How do you define uh, success? I, I think maybe it's a feeling, maybe because I'm, I'm an artist, a lot of it is based on feeling, but I think success is, is how satisfied you feel with what you're doing, how much fulfillment you get from what you're doing, and your outlook on life um, based on, on um, being able to share the gift that you have to share. And then knowing like that piece of the puzzle that you're doing your part so the next generation that comes up can do their part as well. So you're, you're also setting, setting a trail. So know your piece of the puzzle. Know your piece of the puzzle. And use it. Don't sit at home with it. Don't hide it under the couch. Right. Get out there and, and find that piece and then find out where it fits. So if we have a gift, then it, we're not really helping anyone, not even ourselves, by not sharing it. That's right. It's a, it's a double-fold gift. You're doing something for yourself, which when you feel fulfilled, then you're able to, to share the best part of yourself with, with those around you, with, with the people that you love, with, with your community. What do you um, hope that your daughter has learned from you? To live in the now, to enjoy what you have, to know that the journey that you're on, is you're there at that point for a reason. And the, the sooner you accept why you're going through, what, there may be hardships, there may be challenges, whatever it is, that there's a reason for that. Accept that, learn the lesson so that you can move on to the next thing. I mean, God is a big part of my life. so. If I do what God has sent me out to do, then I can also be the light for everyone else around me that needs to, to maybe receive my light and get light from other people. It's such an interactive thing, um, our, our place in this world. Well, Jeanette Arsenault, we have uh, unfortunately uh, have run out of time. You know, it's been such a pleasure having you here and chatting with you and finding out more about your, your journey. And I certainly wish you all the best Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Appreciate it. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Special thanks to the people behind the scenes uh, helping me get this show out there, the folks at that channel in particular. Um, well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. See you soon.